Welcome back to Dakota Cowboy here on Beck TV. I'm your host, Wild Bill, Media Director for the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame in Historic Medora. And our program is brought to you each and every week by our great friends at Dakota Community Bank and Trust. We're here at the uh, beautiful, historic Rough Rider Hotel set up in the lobby with uh, my good friend, Linda Little. It's so Thank good you. to see you, Linda. Thank you. And uh, I need to mention something that we're uh, in the middle of a busy weekend here in Medora. So we're uh, right near the front desk. So you may hear some folks checking in <laughs> as we're uh, visiting, but that's okay. There's a lot of things going on in Medora this weekend. There's the uh, hunter's feed going on tonight. There's the, this is the last weekend for the honky tonk angels. So uh, if you hear some folks in the background, we love it. Be after all, that's what we do. We invite people to, to Medora. Yep. So uh, you got my attention, Linda. Uh, recently, uh, a longtime resident has returned to Medora and is greeting the folks at the Von Hoffman House. Medora is back and she's uh, standing in the street just smiling away. It's a bronze sculpture created by you and uh, what a wonderful work that is. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. You. You're welcome. Let's uh, talk about your background. Where did you grow up? How did you become interested in art? I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Okay. Born and raised. Um, art became a part of my life after a head trauma. I did not do art prior to the accident and was put in an arena that these were taught to do what this couldn't. I was taught by a master sculptor from Russia. His name is Valentina Korhovo. And literally, he took my hands in his and said, I'll teach these to do what this can't. And art literally saved my life. You, I got to know you when they were constructing the uh, Stark County Veterans Memorial. And uh, there is a life-size bronze sculptor there that you created of a soldier mm -hmm. uh, saluting all the fallen soldiers that are represented in Stark County. That's how I came to know the name Linda Little. Um, ironically, our program is airing uh, the weekend after Veterans Day 2022, and uh, um, I, I kind of got goosebumps when I made that realization. Tell us about that soldier. Who is that man? You arguably have spent more time with him than anybody. You created this mm -hmm. man. Who is that? I know he's a soldier. Mm -hmm. I know he's from the United States and he loves his country. Mm -hmm. Who is that man? Well, let's go backwards a little bit. When I was asked to uh, produce the drawings for that project, okay. we did three, because I want to give some credit to the veterans who participated in getting that project to North Dakota in the Stark County area, Dickinson particularly. Um, I drew three drawings, was in a room with 12 uh, veterans of Stark County, and of those three drawings, they selected the one that you see now. And that includes all the plaque work, the whole um, kit and caboodle. The reason that that project is done in the round, and I'm getting around to answering your question okay. in just a second. Mm -hmm. The reason that it's done in the round is I believe that everybody comes full circle. So a very good story of that is while we were trying to create the image of what was going to happen uh, in that particular area in Stark County Dickinson, it was brought to my attention that um, a lot of people would walk up on that site and so I envisioned this beautiful soldier that um, had sacrificed all that he could and he signed on the bottom line for a paycheck less than a normal guy in the workplace. My, my. I didn't do it for soldiers that have passed. I've done it additionally for soldiers that are still living. And part of being grateful to them, the highest honor that they can be paid is the salute. Who is he? Who is that soldier? He, that face is my husband. <laughs> when he came home oh, from if Vietnam. You don't, if you don't mind saying. Is, Park Little. Yeah. 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 Uh, Park served in Vietnam in 65 through 67. Uh -huh. When he came home from Vietnam, part of uh, the tragedy, he was a reconnaissance Marine, part of the tragedy of coming home was not being greeted with a good thank you. I asked him as I was making sketches for the project, Park, what would be the highest honor that I can give these soldiers? 
and he said, a salute. I don't want another memorial that is not showing honor to those that did the job. Okay, all right. It's an amazing sculptor, and it's a very, very special sacred ground, if you will, mm -hmm. there on, uh, at the Rocky Butte Park in Dickinson. If you get a chance, please visit there. Uh, bring it at home to Medora. How did the uh, Medora bronze come onto your, uh, your, uh, your plate? Karen Putnam, who is the foundation president for uh, the Medora project, Chateau project, mm -hmm. uh, called Art Warner, who was one of the individuals that was responsible for getting me hired for the Veterans Project. And she asked how to get in touch with me. They got in touch with me. I went to the Chateau, made a presentation to them, uh, took some of my pieces, particularly of women, uh, prairie women, and um, gave them an opportunity to see what I could do and they liked it, hired me, and the rest is history. Here in the lobby of the Rough Rider Hotel we're set up by a 55 year old Harold Schaefer and also uh, his young son Ed who was the uh, the uh, governor of North Dakota for, for a few years and uh, how did this come to be? Kent, uh, let's see, hold on, uh, Kinley from the Medora Foundation okay. was told that I had done the Medora or was in the process of doing Medora. Mm -hmm. He approached me and asked if I would consider talking to him about doing a project for a younger Ed and a much younger Harold. And I then drew some sketches for them and they liked what they saw. And we uh, were able to put it together and I'm extremely grateful. One of the things I want to bring up is you had mentioned to me in a phone call earlier today about the eyes of my work. Yes, we'll get to that here okay. in just a moment. Thank you. I, I'm, okay. lead, I'm, I'm going to formally, uh, what I'm going to attempt to do is form a liaison between your work ah. with, uh, here in the uh, Rough Rider Hotel with the Schaefers and also Medora okay. and the soldier that I saw. And uh, uh, the, the, the liaison that I want to make, Linda, is in prepping for this interview. I looked at the statues. I did a shoot over at the Von Hoffman House of Medora. I spent some time, not the first time, but I spent uh, time at the uh, Star County Veterans Memorial. <sighs> Your t and let me preface this by saying that um, I'm a little bit nervous in talking, to, and not in talking to you, but I want to portray to our viewers that your talent goes much deeper than mm -hmm. forming a likeness of an individual. Because I looked into the eyes of Harold Schaefer, I looked into the eyes of Medora, I looked into the eyes of the soldier at the Star County Veterans Memorial. I could see their soul. You, with these hands, mm -hmm. you have captured the soul of these individuals and I don't know how that works. I know you're getting a little emotional, <laughs> I, I am, I'm sorry. That's okay. I apologize, but um, how does that, I mean, the only thing that I could think of, Linda, was uh, my grandmother was famous for baking this certain kind of Easter bread. It's called baba, Ukrainian Easter egg bread. And uh, my aunt, her daughter, um, was trying to replicate that after my grandma had passed. And she would pray. She would pray that her mom take my hands and help me form this bread. I have to think that I don't know, you know, your higher power, you mentioned your mentor that, that got you started, took your hands and did that, but I, to do it on your own, I would have to believe that there is a higher power that takes your hand. To capture the soul of Harold Schaefer, to ha capture the soul of a Vietnam veteran, it's not just casual art, Linda, it's not just drawing or making a likeness. Expound on that. What? I, maybe you're speechless. <laughs> I don't know, but that, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, 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 um, <laughs> I want to contribute part of that to where I live. When I moved to North Dakota 20 years ago, okay. I realized that the people that are living here are tough people. Part of that is being able to capture 
the pain of the previous people that came, the prairie people that came across the prairie, and to put that in a perspective, then I will try to figure out what they might have been thinking, what their life may have been like. And literally, I pray before I work on a piece, I pray during the work of my pieces, and sometimes I literally will close my eyes and just work on the clay. It's, um, there's a lot of energy that goes into sculpting when you are sculpting from your soul. There are some people, I'm not one of them, that can produce things very quickly and not spend much time thinking about the work itself. Mm -hmm. I think about the person, what they might have done. For instance, Medora. One of the things that I was captured by by her was her birthday is August 21st, 1855. My birthday is 100 years later. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. We call those things God winks. Yeah. That's God winking at you. <laughs> oh, and my. I was like, what a Whoa. side story. Yes. Yeah. That is so awesome. that that is something that I think about. What she may have gone through, she could hunt with the, the best of them. She could outshoot most men. Uh -huh. She could put on a fancy dress and entertain future presidents. That, to me, is the soul of what I have the responsibility to do for you as an audience. So I pray about it and I ask the Lord, please help me, and not even so much please anymore. Lord, I ask you to help me create the project that will show the spirit of that person. The eyes of a human tell the story yeah. and that's what Thank you, you captured. You can just see the story in Harold and, and uh, young Ed and uh, Medora and the soldier. And then, um, What's on your radar what, as you go forward? Uh, what's next for uh, Linda Little? And, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Huh? <laughs> Maybe we could talk to the North Dakota Cowboy Hall of Fame and we could have six life-size figures of the North Dakota six-pack. There you go. Should we work on it? I'll yep. work on it. Please, let's it. do that. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, you're involved in a lot of things yes. uh, in the art world in, yep. uh, in Dickinson. What are some of the other activities that you partake in? One of my favorite things is music, a mm -hmm. um, particular concert style that is symphony, classical, um, eclectic, <laughs> okay. all those kinds of things that will give our children and future generations an opportunity to have some history. Off the beaten path kind yeah. of music, huh? Yeah. 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 Are there any questions that I haven't asked that uh, you wish that uh, perhaps I may have would have uh, brought forward or we well, I would like to make a public um, thank you to everybody who takes the time to look at not only my work but everybody else's work mm -hmm. in the community of North Dakota we are getting some really fine people who are coming to do some work it's an opportunity for our kids to have some culture based in art that they might necessarily have unless they go to a bigger city. I'm grateful to the people who sponsor work like this so that we can continue to feel the presence of those people that have gone before us and we can not take it in a political form but in a, a thank you form. Are you involved in social media or do you have a website? I do. Do you? Okay. I, um, right now prefer that people get in touch with me with Facebook. I do have a website. Uh, that's a good venue too. Something that I would like to uh, mention is since Medora came out, I have people that are taking their pictures with her and then sending them to me. Oh really? That's How very fun. exciting. Oh, very fun. exciting. So yeah. that would be fun too to see what people's responses are. Yeah, and it uh, got set up here at the end of the season basically, yep. but uh, we got the uh, 2023 season just around the corner. Yep. We'll have to. And I believe Karen Putnam and the group are intending to have uh, a really uh, spirited filled dedication sometime spring or summer. Okay, we will be sure to get the word out on that here on Dakota Cowboy. So, one final question, Linda. I'm a fan of uh, Dan Rather, and he does a program called The Big Interview. And he uh, asks his guests, and I'm a fan of this, and I don't mean to put you on the spot again. Okay. <laughs> I've done enough of that in this little uh, segment, but. Uh, we're on this earth for a short period of time, it's no secret. 
Um, we take comfort in our higher power knowing that there is something beyond this. But when we do cross that rainbow bridge, Linda, how do you want people to remember you? Do you want them to remember you as an artist? Do you want to, how, is there any ideas that come to mind and the, how you'd like to be remembered? Right off the top of my head, for doing the best you could do. Yeah. You're a wonderful individual. Your hands are, what they create are, are Thank you. spiritual. It's amazing. <laughs> you're you're Thank awesome. You. You're Thank awesome. You. Thank you. Our guest today on Dakota Cowboy has been Linda Little. Thank, Thank you. you again for Thank joining you. us. Thank you. We will be right back here on Dakota Cowboy, brought to you by Dakota Community Bank and Trust.